welcome back to the channel and today I'm going to try to attempt to break the sound barrier causing a sonic boom with nothing other than a small red balloon. Oh, okay, well, it's gone now. Well, imagine if that broke the sound barrier already. Video done, all right, have a good one. <laughs> but uh, recently, I actually broke the sound barrier using the much larger inflatable balloon, and uh, the number of balloons minimum that I could get it down to, as you can see, I just broke the sound barrier, uh, and you can probably hear it too. The minimum number of balloons I was able to get down to 12. I could not for the life of me get it lower than 12 despite getting very, very close. This then begs the question, if the really, really large and powerful inflatable balloons can break the sound barrier, uh, can these break the sound barrier? You can see the difference in them right here. Actually, these things are, are a decent size. The hitbox is way smaller, which is actually to the advantage, but there is a very, very, very large disadvantage with the party balloon, and that is the lack of attachment points. There is a single point of attachment. So if I want to try to create a stack of these in an aerodynamically efficient vehicle that is also carrying a seat, because I don't think you can break the sound barrier without being in a driver's seat, um, it's gonna be it's gonna be much harder to design something based around a single attachment point because if I do this these balloons are not attached how am I supposed to like create a, a really e aerodynamically efficient line of balloons like I did with this bad boy right here but uh, those limitations are not gonna stop me from at least trying so the question still remains if it's even possible and then once we find out if I can break the sound barrier then it's about finding out how many, how few balloons do we actually need to do that. Uh, so let's do some initial tests here just to get a feel for what we're dealing with. Uh, this big balloon right here, can it lift 50 kilograms? Let's see. Oh, okay. Well, all right. That test did not go as planned at all. Wait a minute. So this balloon by default, this is a, okay. This is another difference. This is actually a controllable balloon. Whereas this is not a controllable balloon. It's just always buoyant. This one you actually have to activate. All right. So here we go. Can it lift 50 kilograms? Okay. It can lift 50 kilograms. Can it lift 150 kilograms? Aha, it cannot lift 150 kilograms. I'm just trying to see, I want to see the power difference between these two balloons, but first I need to see the power of this balloon. It cannot lift 100 kilograms. What about 80? Okay. It looks like, you know, 50 kilograms. Wait, there's gotta be like, what, what can I do? So this is 50. All right, this is like 60. Okay. All right, this is a good way. These engines are almost 10. I'm just gonna round them up to 10. 70. Okay, and then this should be no because it's around 80 again. Okay, so this thing can lift about 70 kilograms. However, the tiny red balloon, uh, can it lift 50? <laughs> no. Can it lift... Can it lift 10? Whoa, okay, that was actually a lot. Okay, what about 30? Oh, it's so... Yeah, it's not that close. All right, if it can't lift 30, what about good old 20? Okay, I think we found it right here. It's like under 20. So 70 down to 20. It's a pretty big decrease in power, which means we're going to need that many... That, like, a, a lot more balloons. So make your predictions now. Can we, uh... Can we break the sound barrier with these balloons? And if so, how many are we going to need? Perhaps, are we gonna need 99 red balloons? Or maybe we can do it with less. Let's find out. My prediction is going to be, just throwing out random number, 17, 20, 20, 30. I said 17 first. I'm regretting it, but I'm gonna stick with it. I'm, we're going with 17, okay? So the interesting thing with these balloons is, is they have an actual odd uh, area rather than an even area. And that is very rare for trail makers. Almost everything in trail makers is based around an even area, but there is a single seat here that has, that can accommodate the odd area. And that is this motorcycle seat. And this motorcycle seat is 17.5. So wait, can it lift the motorcycle seat? Oh my goodness, look at that. It is the slowest you can possibly go. <laughs> one, two, one, two. Oh, I, I gotta switch to kilometers an hour because uh, I only know the speed of sound in kilometers. Oh no, I just realized a huge issue. I cannot turn these balloons on, which means that if I create something that can break the sound barrier, it is going to instantly 
when I spawn it in. It's just going to instantly shoot up in the air and leave me behind. I'll figure it out. I'll figure it out somehow. All right. How many kilometers an hour are we going? All right. We're reaching two. Grueling speeds here. But we've made progress. Three. Oh, we're hitting three. Look at this. Look at this. Four. We're, we're just gaining speed here. At this rate, we'll be at the speed of sound in a long time. Okay, but... Oh, no. I actually can't even... No, I can't even add two of these next to each other. What am I supposed to do? How am I supposed to build this? All right, you know what? Let, let's do a quick uh, aerodynamics test here of this vehicle. Okay, so this has some aerodynamics, but they are not ideal by any means. This is bad. A lot of this is very bad. Even this hitbox is actually like, oh my goodness. This is going to be rough. This is going to be really, really, really rough. All right. So here is my plan. This is a bad plan. All right. We're not going to use pipe pieces. Weight. I'm remembering weight is going to be a big issue. So I need to maximize my, uh, I need to maximize my aerodynamics here and my weight. And I just have no good options. All right, I'm just going to do this. Doing a little bit of that. These girder pieces uh, weigh less. Grid blocks. So what I'm trying to build here is a way to just have a single file line of balloons. So with these aerodynamic pieces, I can build out to the side like this. And you know what? I think I just got to uh, I gotta keep it going. I'm going to end up using these smaller ones because they have more attachment points. And what essentially needs to happen is I'm gonna put another balloon like this, but in order to attach it, I have to create a little gap here. And see, this is where things actually get really complicated because everything else is built for like a even width. But as you can see, we are odd width here. We may actually have to do like a zigzag. This seems like a lot of material. And we have the issue of our, oh, look at our aerodynamics, it's so bad. Well, let's just, uh, let's just see what this feels like, okay? Wee! It's so slow. A hundred. We've reached 107 kilometers an hour. We need to go 12 times faster. All right, well, let's keep this design so far. I have other designs in mind, but I wanted to try to start with a single file design first. But um, I'm going to try to change the aerodynamics of this and then copy and paste. Oh, you know, whoa, I just realized when I zigzag this, this is even width. What? That's not necessarily a better thing. The motorcycle seat is like, it's a better shape, but you know what? Fine, let's go with the even width. So now I can put this right here and it has terrible aerodynamics, <laughs> but it's, it's the lightest seat. I can, I can just deal with the aerodynamics. Okay, yeah, this can definitely be different. This design is confusing me so much right now. Okay, so here's an interesting question. You can see right here, there are three arrows of uh, aerodynamic resistance, but they are in between this hitbox and this hitbox. So if I take this overlapping part here and just fill it like this, now we have no arrows. It would look like this should take aerodynamic resistance, but because the hitboxes are here and here, I think it actually just fills the gap as if it's a solid surface and there's no aerodynamic res We're completely eliminating any aerodynamic resistance that way, which I think is ideal. This just got a huge point in the plus column for this design now. Okay, but now we have these ones, which uh, we're gonna obviously use the most aerodynamic piece. There we go, we got green arrows now. I yeah, see there's no arrows down here. I still have the seat issue though. Oh, this is another one of those things. There's actually no aerodynamics hitting this because there's a hitbox and there's a hitbox. I'm just filling in the gaps. Ooh, this is turning out to be more interesting of a design than I was expecting. All right, how do I copy and paste this now? I feel like I can take this and paste it here and then rotate it, put it there. There we go. Okay, so now I take this and I think I can just copy and paste this. Yeah, I got it. I got it. How many did I have before? I don't remember. All right, here it is in my history. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven balloons. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. I'll go to seven again. And then here on the seventh balloon, I am going to cap it off with aerodynamics. Fill these in as well. All right, so we were at 107 kilometers an hour with seven balloons before. When I aerodynamically uh, just fill this thing in, uh, now what are we at? I should, I should probably have it start vertical so I don't end up swaying this mu oh okay this is weird this is some weird stuff but you can see our speed is three oh, oh we're, we're gonna break the sound barrier not we're not with this build but in this video where i think we can do it with, with uh, the red balloons because we almost broke 300 just by aer adding aerodynamics we almost tripled our speed let me see what it's gonna be like if i actually start vertical 
This will hopefully get rid of some of the sway. Ah, okay, here we go. Oh, look at that. Oh, okay, it started off nice. I know what I have to do. We gotta add the tail fin for directional stability. All right, so I believe this is the best part for the job right here. Now, let's see how we feel. Ooh, ooh. Maybe, wait, the fact that I have seven probably makes it bad instead of an even number. This looks like, cause there's three on each side. There's three wedges on each side. Cause I was wondering, well, look at that. 300 and what? Go back up, go back. Come on, keep going. 340, okay. We're making progress. I might be able to break the sound barrier with this design. All right, so we got seven balloons. I'm going to add six to this. So that brings us up to 13. So that brings us from 350. Oh, this is not promising. How are we slower? Oh, we're so much slower. That made us slower and we're going straighter. Oh, oh, I forgot to put the nose cone on. All right, now we should be faster than 350. No. No, why is this so bad? Oh, there, oh, we did it. We did it. 360. We, we almost doubled our balloons and we've got like a very, 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 very small amount of increase in speed. It's our trajectory is really bad too. Everything about this is bad. Now I need to start looking at my center of mass and lift. Okay, center of mass. It's, it's not that bad. The center of mass is pretty centered. It is a little bit towards this side where the seat is more... But if I move the seat here, actually that is better. Okay, maybe this is just a better option. All right, let's, does, this, does this help? Does it help changing the center of mass? No, I'm still pretty off. No, it's pretty much exactly the same. All right, well, I'm just gonna stack a whole bunch more balloons. And I'm now I'm getting the feeling that uh, I, I'm less confident that this is possible. We're at 49 balloons. All right, we got the nose cone on there. Now let's see what happens. 49 balloons brings us up to bad. Oh, the amount of weight that we add is just not, it doesn't have returns. We actually go slower. Going from 13 to 49 is slower. Well, good thing I have a different, completely different design in mind. You know, trying to go single file uh, is one thing, but that may not be the best option. I'm going to save this as my failure. Just so I have a record of my failure. It's always good to think back of when you, where you improved from. And I'm just going to build a completely new design now. And this design is uh, going to use the balloons in a very different orientation. We're going to be turning them sideways. And I'm going to put a girder on the end like this. And then we're going to duplicate and create two columns of balloons. So then this girder, well, I should probably go up then rather than down. So then I could just copy and paste these balloons up like this. So they're actually going to be much more densely packed, but they are gonna take up an overall bigger area. But if I cover that with aerodynamic blocks enough, this might be more bang for our buck because we're not adding useless weight uh, just for the sake of attaching balloons nearly as much. Okay, so this is 16 balloons. And the fun thing about this is now it actually is odd width again. So we can go back to the motorcycle seat, which does have better natural aerodynamics. So what does this feel like without any uh, aerodynamics added? Look at that. Well, 230, well, we're still at 16 balloons though. Um, I think we were, we were a little bit better, including aerodynamics on the previous build. Uh, but now, let's uh, take a look at the aerodynamic profile of this. I gotta face it into the arrow, turn on aerodynamics, and that this is a lot of arrows. And in, uh, in case you weren't aware of the, the logic I'm thinking of here, the more arrows you have, the more points of resistance you have. So even if I maximize the aerodynamics on these, it's still a lot of points that are going to be fighting us in the air. So the other design, although weight-wise was less efficient, it was aerodynamically more efficient because it just had less points to work with. See, this is a lot to break through the air. I'm actually starting to doubt whether this is possible. I was thinking it was at first, and now I'm not. And we have another issue here. I can't really make a symmetrical uh, angle of force with this. Because no matter what, there's going to be one wedge that is just facing in a different direction. Well, let's see what happens though. All right, I can put those like that. And then I will flip and then everything on the opposite side of the center point, I'm gonna flip in the other direction. But this is slightly asymmetrical as you can see. There's one that's just in a different direction. You know what, maybe I'll just face it like up or down. All right, so now you can see our aerodynamics other than right here might actually be worth adding one of these on here. 
But we still have these three. There's three up here. It might actually be easier to have the seat down like this and then put the aerodynamics on the bottom. We got one. Oh, the hitbox. Yeah, there's only there's only one. Yeah, that's not bad. Okay, we got all really nice aerodynamics now. How's our center of forces? Okay, it's oh, it's not terrible. It's not great though. Uh oh, how do we attach a uh, tail fin to this? Well, let's see what it's like without the tail fin. Here we go. It's bad. That's pretty bad. Whoa, 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 whoa! Look at our speed. Oh, look at our speed. Six hundred. We got halfway there. We got halfway there. This is gonna happen now. I'm back to feeling confident that we can do this. We just need to add a tail fin for directional stability, uh, but our, the oddness of this seat isn't going to accommodate that very easily. Unless I just add two tail fins? No, but then this adds more aerodynamic issues, because now these are an extra point of contact. Wait, unless this is a little bit more weight, but it's not going to actually add an extra point of contact because it's filling in two hitboxes. There's no actual gap there that is uh, going to be uh, dealing with air. All right, now I got tail fins on. Let's see how this feels. 300, 400, 500, 600. Oh, oh, almost 700. All right, we do, we have that twist. What was my prediction? 17? Did I say 17? I think I did 17. That's a bad number now because this is an even, this, this naturally has an even number of balloons, so it's impossible for me to be right with this build. But I'm already at 16, aren't I? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Yeah, so I think I'm way off. We're not going to be able to do it with 17. The question then remains, are we still going to be able to do it? All right, let me double this. All right, we went from 16 to 32 balloons. What? We're going slower? Why does this happen? This was designed in such a way that more balloons is going to just objectively be more lifting power because I'm not adding any more useless like bulk weight for the balloons. How is this so much worse? How? I really thought that I was just going to more balloons equals more speed. Oh. Oh, this is how. Now, now let's see. Please be better. 600, 700, 800. <gasps> oh, we're so close. All right, I got really worried there for a second. I can't believe that, that mistake, but we're back on track now. We're back on track to breaking the sound barrier with red balloons. All right, is there a better design than this system? Like, is it all I can do is just add more balloons? All right, so we're at 32, 36. All right, can we break a thousand now? There it is, a thousand. Can a better tail help here? Cause we're just going way sideways in a bad way. Like, I feel like if we just kept a straight trajectory, we'd be good. So the issue is your center of mass is definitely to the belly side here. But if I move this up, we're definitely gonna go slower. We broke a thousand and now we still go way sideways though. So it's not helping with our center because now our center of mass it's still not perfect, but it's definitely better here, isn't it? But we do worse. So I'm gonna put it back down there. I'm gonna see what happens when I attach this ore in this orientation. I get it, orientation. All right, there we go. 900, 1,080. Why does it go this way? I mean, I know it's because of the center of mass. You know, maybe I'll just face it like up or down. I wish, I wish the more resistance like this, it could go straighter. All right, the ore made no difference. So I'm just gonna not use it. Is it that? Is it, is it that the one wedge block? If I flip the wedge block, do you think it's gonna change what direction I'm, I uh, orient towards? Like there's, no, there's nothing I can do. This has to be uh, uneven just because of, there's an odd number of blocks here. So I just flipped it in the other direction. Now let's see. Is that the other direction? It is, isn't it? So now I flip towards my belly. So my character is on the upper side. And then if I flip that around 180 degrees. Wow. Now I flip towards my back. It's that one wedge block. <gasps> No, there's no single block solution to this that is as good aerodynamics. Is there one that will distribute air evenly in all directions? What about the nose cone? Is there a single block nose cone? I don't believe that there is. No. See, this is, oh, whoa. oh, there is. What's the aerodynamics like on this? That's a pretty green arrow. Oh, <gasps> this might be the solution. This is a new piece. This, is, this did not exist before the airborne update. And this is exactly what I need. We're gonna place that, wait. Yeah, that little spike is what's gonna do it. That's gonna save us. Oh, and it messes everything else up. You know why? 
Oh, wait, no, no, there's a solution. I gotta add a little bit more. But yeah, that center wedge piece was actually what was connecting all my other wedge pieces. So replacing it with the nose cone, remove those connections. But these should not make that big of a difference. All right, now we should fly much straighter. Let's see here. There we go. 1,000. <gasps> 1,100. Oh, we're 100 away. We are 100 kilometers an hour away. That nose cone made such a huge... And now we're consistent. We're not dropping down to the below 1,000 anymore. That nose cone made such a huge difference. I'm really surprised. I'm so happy that part existed. It was the exact thing I was hoping for. So we are at 36 balloons right now. I'm going to add... I'm going to add another four. So we're at an even 40. All right, this might do it. We might be able to take off a couple, but let's see if this is it. If this is enough to break the sound barrier with just red balloons. It's gonna happen. There it is. It just happened. 40 balloons at maximum is what we need. Let's see how low we can get it. We can probably knock off. Actually, you know what? I don't know because I didn't, where, where do we, where do we end up? 1200. I don't think we can take one balloon off because 1,234 is about the uh, the sound barrier and we are, we got up to like 1,235. I think we may have hit 12, 1,240 for like a second. Oh, what? I survived hitting the skybox at the speed of sound? That is the first time that has ever happened. Usually I just completely explode and there's no more craft left. The craft actually survived. I've never seen that happen before. Okay. Well, whoa, look how much, look how, look how high that sent me up in the air. I jumped out like right away. All right, I'm going to remove two balloons. So this is now 38 balloons. So are we able to break the sound barrier? I'm guessing no. 1200. Look how close this is though. I think I found, I think I found the, the minimum. Is 40 actually the minimum? I personally like... I'm not sure if I can come up with a more efficient design than this thing right here. So let me do a confirmation here of our actual balloon numbers to make sure I was right with 40. 1, 2, 3, 18, 18 19, 20. Wait, what? 21, 22, 23, 24. There was an extra layer. This is 48, not 40. How did I miss a whole extra eight balloons? It's really 48 balloons? Well, I mean, let's go up and see if it breaks the sound barrier just narrowly again. All right, yeah, 48 balloons. I'm glad I recounted that because I was just gonna stick with 40. I was, I, 40 sounded like such a nice even number, but uh, 48. Oh, that was so cool. It like ate through a bunch of the balloons. Why is this so resilient against just crashing? This is awesome. All right, I've taken a minute to think about it and I'm not coming up with any ideas on how to make a better design that could accommodate less balloons and keep the same amount of speed. So this is my best attempt at breaking the sound barrier with just the party balloons and my fewest is 48. I could not go any less than 48. I'm curious if there's any alternative designs that don't use any glitches or friction, like no friction uh, glitches or anything like that. Look at that. I'm, I'm still in my seat and alive. I'm coming back down. So yeah, I'm really curious if there's any other non-exploitative uh, design that genuinely breaks the sound barrier with less than 48 balloons. And look at this, this is a kind of a nice looking vehicle. It's completely functionless. I mean, I can use my seat, but uh, it's probably gonna take me a lot. Whoa! I just broke the sound barrier again using pure gravity power with just a couple of blocks. That's another like, I'm in the water? How, I broke the game too. I just had two accomplishments in a row. One of them, I completely unintentionally broke the sound barrier using gravity power, which I knew was a thing, but not with just a couple of blocks. All right, well, you got you got a two for one video here, breaking the sound barrier with party balloons and breaking the sound barrier with gravity power. If you guys enjoyed this video, you might enjoy some more that you can find right here on the end screen. Hope this video has earned your subscription. Anyway, this has been Scrapman and I'll see you next time. Bye.